David said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. If my enemy came in, they would have took me out if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. And I realized that it's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for today. I just thank you all for being here today. I thank God that God is a good God. He's a faithful God. Because he's been good to me. He's been better than good to me. And I thank you. You know, last week, after the service, after our installation service, we talked about how God says it's time to do what? Rise up and build. And today, I want to continue in that same vein. The Lord said it's time to rise up and build. You know, there are building blocks when you build. You don't just build all at one time. You start with the foundation, and then you build up with it. Y'all forget my raspy voice, but it's all good. God be the glory. Amen. Amen. I stand before you today. Amen. Just have a procedure done, but thank God I'm running on grace today. Amen. And his grace, his grace is sufficient for us. In our weakness, his strength is perfected. So I stand before you in his strength, not in my strength. But I do have a word today. It's a building block. And today I want to talk about the sanctuary. I'm going to talk about building the sanctuary. Amen. I, that's why I want us to sing that song. We come into his house to give in his name to worship him. Amen. I want to talk about the importance of the sanctuary. How many of you here can say, like I've been praying, Lord, I want to see your glory fill the house. I long to see the Lord move in the service. And, you know, the services that we read, we read about in the Word where the priest couldn't even minister because the anointing had filled the house. I want to see that day again. I want to see the glory of God fill the house. Amen. But I know there are some building blocks, amen, to that happening. And the Lord was just dealing with me about what we need to do to have the sanctuary. For him to come down and, and, and shine his Tacoma glory down the sanctuary again. Now, for just for definition purposes, I want to tell you, I looked it up, what sanctuary means. But he told me sanctuary. I said, okay, Lord, I don't usually call it that. I usually call it the church. I call it his house. But let me just tell you what the sanctuary is, and so we're going to get into the word. A sanctuary is a holy, sacred place. It's a holy, say holy, holy. Sacred, place. sacred place. Amen. It's a building or a room for religious worship. It's a building or a room for religious worship. A place that provides safety, amen, in protection and protection from danger or difficult situations. A place that provides safety or protection from dangerous and difficult situations. When I read that definition of what a sanctuary is, you know that you know the question that I first asked, why so many people get hurt in the church? Amen. I had to ask myself, if the church, if the sanctuary is a safety place, a place of what? Protection. Why do so many people get hurt in the church? Hmm. There are some hurt people in church that got hurt in the church. There are a lot of people that have gone home and sit down on the Lord because they got hurt where? In the church. In the church. I really don't think there's no worse hurt than church hurt. Amen. When someone has betrayed you in the church, Come on. Or when someone has treated you some kind of way yes. Yes. in the church, yes. I don't think there's no worse hurt. You know why? On, because you yes. consider the church, the sanctuary, as a what? Safe yes. place. Yes. The words say the name of the Lord is what? A strong tower. Yes. The righteous can run in there what? Safe. Yes. You expect to be safe in the house of the Lord. You don't expect to be exploited. You don't expect to be taken advantage of. 
You don't expect to be some people treated better than you. You don't expect some people can use your gifts and you can't use yours. You expect your money that you put in to be used for what it's taken up for. You don't expect to be exploited when you come to church. But so often this has happened. Now we're really going a different direction than what I... This was not the direction that I was going to go. But I expect I need to tear that just for a minute. Because when you come to church, you want to feel the love of God and the love of the person sitting next to you. You don't want to come to church and sit on this high looking at you funny on this side. You don't want to come to church and certain people are given the best seats. And you're told to sit over there. You don't respect that in the church, do you? My God, Lord, take it in a different direction. Hallelujah. 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 There are some things you just don't expect to see in the church. I'm definitely going a different direction. Mm. I hear something. I remember this church I was a part of. I won't call nobody. I won't, I won't ever call any church's name. But that was a church that I was a part of. <clears throat> um, I'm going to say in California. Let's just say that. And I was in a meeting one day. Oh, God. I got Okay, I hear the Spirit tell me to say it. I was in a meeting one day, and all of a sudden I heard some music. How many of you know you don't forget a little song you used to know when you were in the world? I heard the song Sexual Healing. Do you remember the song by Marvin Gaye? Some of you might be too young to know about Marvin Gaye. But he sung a song when I get that feeling I need sexual healing. He wasn't talking about nothing holy either, okay? But I was sitting in this meeting and I heard that song. Yeah, you know, I said, no, I didn't hear that. You ever just said, no, I didn't hear that. I just, I'm just, i going to start rebuking the devil. Because I'm thinking I'm in church hearing some more music. Then all of a sudden, I heard it louder. That's, that sounds like Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. <laughs> and blues. And, and I said, well, why, why do I hear that in here? Now, remember, I was in church, in the church house. How many of you know every room in this house is holy? Amen. Amen. And the one said that somebody was practicing in there. They had a blues concert coming up. They was using the church to practice. My, my, my. Oh. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm not talking about something I heard. And I said, how in the world can you let that go in God's house? Amen. And so they just kept, they did, it was like they ignored me. I said, wait a minute now. This is God's house, isn't it? I said, if you don't tell them to stop it, I'm going to go out and tell them to stop it. I said, God is not pleased with that. And they said, well, just, just, just let it go. We'll, we'll take care of it. Wait a minute. That's just one example. Something recently happened. There was another church. Just recently, the last couple of weeks. Had a rhythm and blues party at the church. They called it jazz. And they were out on the lawn doing line dancing. How many know every, every inch of God's house is holy? Whether it's outside or inside or whether it's in the fellowship hall, it's still all holy. Because it's a holy place. It's its inhabitation. We have to be careful when we let go on in the house of God. Because God is going to hold us accountable. Hallelujah. My God. There's some things going in God's house. There's some things going in pastor studies. I'll be ashamed for you all to know. I have been in pastor studies. You be, ooh, it would make you sick to hear some of the conversation about some of those weird tight dresses. You'd be surprised at things that are said in God's house. I think people forget whose house it is. How many of you got to respect someone else's house? Amen. Amen. You have to go in someone else's house. You can't go in someone else's house rearranging the furniture. Amen. You can't walk in Sister Finn's house and say, well, I think this chair be better over here. And I think that chair be better over there. You can't. You don't have that right. This is Finn's house. This is God's house we're talking about. Amen. It's up to him how he arranged the furniture in his house. Oh, my God. Let me talk about how the glory is going to come back to the house of God. 
how the in the saints where the glory should always be here. Now, right now we're meeting because we don't have another place to meet. We're meeting in a hotel room, right? In a conference room, right? But let me say this. While we're here, this is holy ground. Amen. I don't know what goes on in here during the week, but on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, this is what? His house. So we got to be careful how we treat his house. Amen. The Lord said this time now when people start respecting his house again. Amen. And not just feel like you can do anything in his house. Mm, mm. It's holy ground. You know why it's holy? Because it's been set aside for the Lord's use. Amen. So there's a way we got to treat the house. There's a way we got to treat each other in the house. Amen. The first scripture I want to look at is Matthew 21st chapter. Verse 13. Matthew 21st chapter, verse 13. Hallelujah. Matthew 21st chapter, verse 13. In the King James, it reads like this. And he, mean Jesus, said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called what? A house of prayer. But thou hast made it a den of thieves. Jesus said, It's written. That my house shall be called a house of prayer. So it tells me what should be going on in his house. Prayer. Amen. His house shall be called a house of prayer. What Jesus was doing was rebuking the people because they was using his house to extort people. Amen. There were money changers in the house. And what they were doing, they were unjust balances. They were selling turtle doves and all those kind of things in God's house. And it, it angered Jesus. That's the only time you really saw Jesus angry in the scripture. He came in and he whooped the money changers out of his house. You know why? Because that wasn't the place for extortion and unjust balances in his house. So you got to be careful how you handle things in his house. That's the only time that it shows that Jesus really was angry. When he came into his house, he said, my house should be called a house of prayer. So it tells me there should be a lot of prayer going on in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I think we need to open up everything that we do in the house with what? Prayer. prayer. You know why we should do that? Because we should want the Lord to order our steps. Amen. And whatever it is that we do, we need to, it needs to be preceded by prayer. Amen. There should be nothing that we do in this house that we don't pray about first. If we got to get God's permission and we need his blessing on whatever it is that we do in this house. So we need to always open up. That's why Sister D, Dr. D, every time we, we get ready to open the service, what's the first thing that she does? Prayer is the first thing on our agenda. And let me say this too. There should be an atmosphere of prayer. When we walk into church, we should have an attitude of prayer. When you come in the house, first of all, the enemy is going to give you all kind of problems before you get here. Amen. Back in the day, my former marriage, I was married to a pastor. I can't tell you how many Sunday mornings we, we got into it before we came to church. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth and shaming the devil. And I'd come in there, I'd be just as mad, just as hot. <laughs> And then I fake it. <laughs> you know how we do. Don't tell the truth. You sit by your baby man. I'm not the only one. Coming in and smiling at everybody. Praise the Lord. How are you today? And know you done had issues before you got here. Know this. That is part of the enemy's tactic. Is to get you all discombobulated before you get in here. So you can't get to his gate with Thanksgiving. We can get you all stressed out before you come. Amen. This morning I got ready to leave the house and the garage wouldn't close. <laughs> First of all, I was running out of the house because I wanted to be here by 9.30. And got everything in the car and, and got and pulled out the driveway and going to click the garage and it wouldn't move. <laughs> I just start praying in the name of Jesus. Touch it. Touch it. I promise y'all. Jesus' name. I ain't spoken in tongues. 
close the garage, but you know it wouldn't close. But how do you know that's the devil's job? To try to get you all off track. So when you get here, you can't even concentrate. So what I did, I said, okay. I put the car in park, got in, went in, and closed the garage up from the inside, and then walked all the way around the house in the living room, unlocked the door, and went out the front door. You know what? Because I wasn't going to be defeated. Yeah. And some people let them stop them from going to church. Yeah. I ain't going to church. Today. I'm just having a bad day. Yes. 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 That's when you get a phone call on Sunday morning. You trying to get ready for church, and someone calls you with all this bad news. The devil will do everything he can to distract you from getting here. Because we should come in with a prayerful spirit when we come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the second thing, hallelujah, we should come in with praise. Hey, let's look at Psalms 100, verse 4. Psalms 100, verse 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 100, verse 4. It says, it reads, into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be faithful unto him and do what? Bless his name. When you walk in here, you should have a praise already on your mouth. Amen. Amen. That should be a song already in your spirit. How many when you wake up in the morning, sometimes God just give you a song for that day? Amen. When you come in, you should bring that song in, in your heart with you. Amen. That praise and worship should be in your spirit when you come in the door. Amen. That way the praise team won't have to try to pump you and prime you. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> when you kind of make folks praise the Lord, everybody's sitting there looking at you like. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You turn your back. Dr. D's over here playing with all the heart and the freedom. They sing and, and they sit there and say, What's wrong with y'all today? <laughs> Put on the God of the praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yes. If ever you come in your heart is heavy, you need to enter with a praise. Amen. Learn how to praise your way through. Yes. That's what God inhabits the praises yes. of his people. Yes. Amen. Yes. So you're going to first come in with what? Prayer. Yes. And then you're going to come in with what? Praise. praise. And the third thing, you're going to come in with the word. Amen. I don't come to church to be entertained. It's enough of that old TV. Amen. I want to come to church and hear some word. Yes. Some life-changing word. Yes. Some anointed word that can change my life. Yes. Amen. Let's look at Malachi 3 and 10. Malachi 3 and 10. Malachi 3 and 10 reads, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that that may be meat, which translates word. In my house and prove me now. Here we say the Lord. And see what I open the goodness of heaven. Yes. Pour you out a blessing you can't receive. He's telling you two principles right here. You need to come in and bring a gift. Amen. Bring your tithes and your offerings Amen. with you when you come into the house. Now, if you don't have it, that's no condemnation at all. Amen. But he said, bring the tithes that there may be meat that the word can go forth in his house. How do you know it cost to be in this room? Amen. They didn't donate this space to us. Amen. Every Sunday morning, mm -hmm. amen, we pay $163.13 because it's not free. See, so he said, bring the tithes you can support the word in the house. And that should be a preceding word in the house. I hate entertaining preachers. I don't come to church to be entertained. Amen. I'm not impressed if you can walk the pews. Amen. I'm not impressed if you put this foot over that pew and over that. That doesn't do anything for my spirit. Amen. I want to know what thus saith the Lord. Amen. I don't care if you have a rhythm or not. Amen. I want a preceding word. The Lord said the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we come in the house, if we want the glow to return, we got to bring some word in the house. Amen. That means who's standing behind this holy, this holy, holy spot have got to study to show they self approved. Amen. You can tell when you go in church whether that preacher's prepared or not. Amen. You can tell when you're just getting some rambling remarks. 
<laughs> you can tell when you because when you leave, you can't tell anybody what you what you learned. <laughs> you just say it was good. <laughs> it moved me. It had a rhythm to it, but did it teach you anything? Yes. Did it convict you of sin? Did it encourage your spirit? Did it encourage your heart? Did it help you with a trouble that you've had? Did it help you with the situations you're going to face? That's what the word is. The word is effective. And God wants to return the word to the house of God. That means there's got to be some holy, consecrated people behind the holy desk. Amen. The word says many are called. But what? Few are chosen. It's a lot of people who feel like they've been called to preach. Because they could carry a good hum. And someone said, you can preach, boy, because you can sing. How many don't sing and don't have anything to do with preaching? You learn a song by memory. The only way you're going to know this word is to get into it. And let him speak and impart the word to us. So the word should be proceeding, amen, from the house of God. So we talked about doing what? We talked about restoring the sanctuary to his glory. Because I tell you what, I think that God's service should be filled with signs, wonders, and miracles. But there's a, there's a standard that goes with that kind, of, that kind of service. There's got to be some prayer. There's got to be some praise. And there's got to be some word. Amen for that to happen. Glory to God. And the next thing, hallelujah, we've got to learn how to show reverence again for the house of God. If I seem like I'm excited, I am. Because I feel like God gave me a secret. He gave me a He gave me an instruction on how to get the glory back. And I want to see the glory back in the house of God. I don't want to see you come and waste your time. I want to see you grow. That's what church is all about. It should produce growth in your life. How many of the words should challenge you to change? Yeah, yeah. If you come in with a certain situation in your life, how many of you know you should get some instruction when you come in the house of God? Amen. Because God has given a word for whatever your situation is. And you should find that in the house of God. Amen. But we have to, we have to learn how to show reverence again for the house of God. And let me tell you how you show Things that you shouldn't do in the house of God. First of all, there shouldn't be a bunch of chattering in the house of God. Amen. Can I talk about how to enter into the house of God? Yes, yes. Enter in with reverence. Let me say this, and, and I don't say this to be hard, but church time is not fellowship time. Fellowship comes out to church. Amen. So when you come in, I know we greet each other with a holy hug and kiss, but that's not the time for a lot of jesting. And joking and jabbing and gossiping. None of those things should be happening when you come in the house. You should be focused when you come in the house. You should be hungry and thirsty. He said, blessed are they that do what? Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Why? For they shall be filled. So we come in. Come in with reverence. And I want to ask to Dr. D, if you could, you, I think you made us a tape once. We need to have some holy music going when we come in. That puts you in the mood. That puts you in the that puts you in a state of mind. Okay, I'm walking into the house of God. I'm not walking into a hotel room. Amen. 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 I'm coming into his presence. And I've got to know how to come into his presence. I've got to reverence his presence. Amen. So when you come in, come in with a meditative spirit. With your mind, whatever, amen, has troubled you before you get here. Can I ask you to leave it at the door? <laughs> Whoever you offended with, can I ask you to leave it at the door? Whoever offended you, can I ask you to do what? Leave it at the door. Because we want to come into his house with reverence. Amen. Hallelujah of him. Glory to God. Amen. Let's look at 1 Timothy 3 and 15. We do a little teaching this morning. Is that okay? Oh, yes. These are building blocks. Amen. First Timothy 3 and 15. And I'm going to say this too about in the sanctuary too. 
Be reverent when you move in and out. How many of you know in some churches the Urshan won't let you out of certain uh, let me let me ask this Jerry. Since Jerry been an Urshan for a long time. Say out to Jerry. This is not Urshan. Amen. Let's give our hand clap. Hey. Amen. Praise God for Urshan. Now, I, back in the day, that was a time, certain time of the service, the, the urchins wouldn't let you out the door. Amen. How many of you came from a church like that? Amen. They wouldn't even let you come in. Amen. You had to wait outside the door, didn't you? Because there was something sacred going on at the time. So they wouldn't let you in and out. So let's be reverent to the house. Know when to go in and when to go out. Yes. Can I give y'all a little free secret? <laughs> Is it okay? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Can I give you a free secret? Go potty before you come in. <laughs> That's a free secret. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now sometimes you go potty and you still might the potty again. No problem. <laughs> no problem. But it shouldn't be every Sunday. Amen. <laughs> and pick your time. Can I? Am I getting too personal? Am, am I being too personal? I think that we need to teach. The Bible say my people perish for lack of knowledge, and that's my job as the pastor to give impart knowledge to you, that you'll know how to grow and how to conduct yourself in the house of God. Amen. If you want to be blessed, amen, this is a building block that we're going to get back to. We're going to reverence the house of God again. Amen. How many of you have 1 Timothy 3 and 15? It says, but if I tarry long, but that thou mayest know how thou art to, art to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillow and the ground of truth. He's saying that you ought to know how to carry yourself. As an individual, we ought to know how to carry ourselves in the house of God. Now, I want to tell you something, Dr. B. This is going to get to be some tight word right here, but, you know, I, I haven't given it the way he gives it to me. Amen. And I'm just, I'm, I'm raw and uncensored. I'm sorry. I, I'm not the best on coloring things because I think that we need to know truth. Amen. So you'll know the truth. It's the truth that will make you free. Oh, yes. Now, sometimes the truth will make you mad first. Yes, yes, well. right. How many of us may tell you about yourself at first it make you really mad? Yes. And then when you sell down, yes. and especially during the night watches, the Lord said, you know that was true. <laughs> <laughs> but it made you mad first. And then it made you free. So today, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen. Because we're exposing some of his, some of his tricks. Mm. The way he kept us out of the presence of God. Is through our irreverence for God and his house. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. We, we teach in the word today. Amen? Amen. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1 reads, Keep thy foot when I go into the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give us sacrifices of food. For they consider not that they do evil. But well, this is saying when you come in the house of God, be more ready to hear Amen. than to talk. Amen. Be more ready. Have an ear to hear what the, what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let me say this. The enemy does not want you to hear, really hear, what the Spirit is saying to the church. He wants to give you all kinds of diversions to keep you from truth. But it said, be more willing to be quiet in the church. Listen. So you can rightly divide the word. That's why the word says study to show who? Yourself. Thyself, not myself. Amen. Yeah. Yourself. Yourself. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a work with that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And the way to, to divide the word of truth, you got to hear it. And let me say this, you're going to turn that brain off from all kinds of distractions. How many of you sit in your chair and thought about, well, we're going to have a dinner today? <laughs> it's okay. We all have. <laughs> what restaurant going to have a long line? Oh, Am I the only one that thought about things like that in church? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what am I going to wear to work tomorrow? 
Did I turn the stove? Did I turn the iron off before I left home? Oh, did I turn the stove off? The devil would been over in inundate your mind with things to distract you from hearing what thus saith the Lord. And you would sit there, you have to catch yourself and, and jerk yourself back into, into reality. Because the enemy gonna give you all kinds of things to put your mind on. You know what the word say? I'll keep you in perfect peace. Yes. If you keep your mind stayed on me. In the service, your mind should be on him. Your mind shouldn't be on anything else other than him. But what if I have a crisis going on? Right now, my body doesn't feel the best. It doesn't. Many of you know, I had a procedure this past week. My body doesn't feel the best, but right now, my, my body is not what my mind is on. My mind is on hearing God. And speaking what thus saith the Lord. Yes, my body is important. Yes, but the word is more important. Amen. It's everlasting birth. It's everlasting truth. So that's what my mind is on. I can pet the rest of me later. <laughs> Amen. I can rest later, but right now, I've got to bring a word. I'm on assignment this morning. My assignment right now, the only thing that's important to me is my assignment. Because I'm going to be graded on it. I'm going to tell you what I do when I leave the church. I say, Lord, how, will, how did I do today? God, did I speak what you told me to speak? Was it me or was it you? Are you pleased? And then I say, thank you, Lord, for using me. Because it's all about him. Everything we do, amen, is all about him. Especially when it concerns his house. I know it's a little warm in here. Amen. Amen. It's a little warm, but amen. We'll be through in just a minute. Praise the Lord. Now, this is one of the, this is the last thing I'm going to cover. And this is going to be the most uh, probably difficult thing to cover. Is how to dress in the house of God. <laughs> Woo. Come on, Pastor. Woo, it's tight, but it's right. That's all right. That's all right. Woo. How to dress. Huh. How many of you know God has a dress code? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't say the world. Mm. In the world, everything and anything goes, right? Now, this is a message that's not very popular. Let me say this. If you were invited, let me ask the question. If you were invited to the White House, you know, now President Joe Biden is the president. If someone invited you to come to the to the president's house. And it was going to be a dinner, a formal dinner at the president's house. And you were going to be able to sit and break bread with the president. Now tell me, would you wear jeans with holes in the knee? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Would you wear, my husband called a white beater t shirt? <laughs> I never heard the term he called white be the t shirt. <laughs> Would you wear a white be the t shirt to the White House? No. And let me say this. Let me preface this by saying this is not to condemn anyone. This is not a, a whether you have to wear dresses or pants sermon because I don't believe in that. Some people say you have to wear dresses. You know, when I first got saved, the ministry I got saved, I said women could wear nothing but dresses. Amen. And Lord knows my, my, I, 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 abide, I, I abided by the rules, but Lord knows my heart wasn't in it. Because <laughs> I like to pair blue jeans. I, I may have took the pants off, but my heart was still on. <laughs> so Somebody say this. Don't reduce my message down to that. What I'm saying is when you go before royalty, how do you know you come in this house? You come in to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you should look your best. And that's not to say it's a dress or pants. You should look your best when you come into this house because you're representing the kingdom. And you coming before royalty. Amen. Amen. Church has gotten so casual. And you know, and young people, I understand them being very casual. I understand it. I understand. But us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. 65. Hallelujah. Wear your best. Because you're going to a you're going to a wedding. Amen. And you're on the guest list at the wedding. Amen. 
And there's just a certain way you need to dress when you come into the house of God. Huh. Lord Jesus. This is getting a little tight right here. My chest is getting a little tight. <laughs> My chest is getting a little tight. <laughs> Amen. Let's look at 1 Timothy 2, verse 9 and 10. 1 Timothy 2, verse 9 and 10. And please do not leave here condemned. Because if you do, you miss the whole message. You miss the whole message. 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 reads, And likewise, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves with modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broken hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Verse 10, But that which becometh women professing godliness with good work. What he's saying is, we have to be careful how short the dress is. <laughs> That's just put it in plain English. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. Come on, Sometimes you have to laugh, Jay. <laughs> the dress shouldn't be so long that I see all your business. <laughs> Can I just say that? Yes. When I see you, I can't see nothing but that. <laughs> I can't talk to you for looking down. Y'all feel me, don't you? Do y'all feel what I'm saying? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. The dress, if it's, if it's up to here and if the, if the person come in and don't have nothing else, what should we do? You want my scarf? They get mad. You want to come. They get mad. Well, you know, people might get mad, but sometimes people need to get mad to get themselves together. Amen. If doing right offends you, Amen. where is the love of God Amen. in you? Amen. Amen. There are certain things I put on. Amen. I feel convicted. Amen. Let me tell you, let me just give you a good example. Thank you, Lord. Holy the Spirit has brought something by my mind. Just happened this morning. This set of jewelry that I have on I love, praise Lord. <laughs> I had it made a couple of years ago down the boulevard. There was a lady making jewelry. And I wanted this jewelry for some occasion that I was going to. She so didn't want something a little bit more elaborate. Now, this, this morning I put these earrings on. There was a couple more bees that clung down below this. And I put them all the way, but I'm not going to the club. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. Don't you like somebody who's transparent before you? So you know what I did? I took out my tweezers. I stuck the tweezers in here and I took them last, those last two bees off. They were hanging way down here. Because I didn't want you to see my bees and not see me. I wasn't advertising my jewelry. When you get up in the morning, to go somewhere. You know when it don't feel quite right what you have on, don't you? Don't you give a certain little feeling like, you know, that, that's a little tight. I done grew a little bit. I need to, you know. <laughs> this is just a little bit too tight. This is just a little bit too short. You feel that, don't you? But most of the time, we'll go out anyway. And then when you see someone, I'm going to say this, because I say this, we all family right here, around here, right? <laughs> When you see a sister, every time she get up, she's doing this right here. Every time she get up. You know what that means? She knows it's too short and too tight. That's conviction right there. Now, your dress will roll up a little bit. I'm not talking about, you know, just make an adjustment. I'm talking about every time you stand up, you got to pull it down. Okay. It's tight, but it's right in there. Amen. Because sisters, we don't want to be tipping the brothers in the service. Amen. Brothers, we don't want to be tipping the sisters in the service. How do you know some brothers' pants are just too tight? We don't balance this thing out. Can we balance today? Have you seen some pants that just show too much business? You know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Can we be real? Yes. And that's all you see. You trying to talk up here. You to keep your head up to the sky. What's that? Earth, wind, fire to keep your head to the sky. 
Amen. Yeah, I used to love music, ain't you tell? <laughs> Amen. But now I dance to a different beat. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But let me just say this. Let your spirit be your conviction. Amen. And then especially if we want to sit close to the front, let's really be nice. <laughs> How we sit. Yes. How do you know there's a proper way to sit? Ladies. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <laughs> there is a way to sit to not show your business. Amen. Amen. I, can't, I can't be more discreet than that. Amen. But I said I to say that there's a standard in the house of God. And I want us to bring the standard back. And I'm not saying bring back bondage because I do not believe in bondage. I like to look good just like the next person do. Come on now. But I don't want to look good at the expense of somebody else's soul. Amen. I don't want to cause anybody else to go astray looking at me. Amen. 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 When I come in, I don't want our eyes to be on me. Amen. You know how in the world we came in, we wanted everybody to know we were there, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we made what you call a grand entrance. Yeah. But how be on the kingdom? We don't do that. We enter his gate with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise. Now we ask you, God, to forgive us for the times that we didn't honor and respect your house. God, we pray, God, that you would stir us up, Lord, and teach us how to reverence your house. Teach us, God, when we, when we walk in, in this place, we don't walk into just a room. We're walking into your presence, your holy ground, Father, that you place that you, this is your holy habitat. This is your abode, Lord God. And help us when we come in to realize that we're not just coming to any old place. But we're coming to your house. And God, we gather in your name. And God, we want to worship you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, we want to build this house. God, in the way that is pleasing to you. God, we say today, less of us and more of you. We decrease today that you may increase. We ask you to have your way moved by your spirit. We're grateful unto you, God. We bless your name. We give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen.